Maybe you've been coding in Scratch for a little while and want to bring your code to the real world. Well, the BBC Microbit helps us do just that. And in this Microbit Basics tutorial, I'll show you how to connect Microbit to Scratch using Scratch Link. And we'll go through some of the Microbit features that are available to us in Scratch. Coming up. Hello world, Surfing Scratcher here, teacher, surfer, programmer, bringing you the goodness of learning to code through video tutorials. If that sounds like something that you're into, consider hitting that subscribe button. You're going to need a microbit for this tutorial, and if you're wondering how to get a BBC microbit, then head on over to the BBC website and find a reseller, or use the link in the description below to get yours, and you'll be supporting this channel. Alright, let's connect microbit to Scratch. If you haven't already, head across to this URL here, it's just the Scratch website forward slash microbit. The landing page here gives us a little bit of information about the microbit that you can go and read, but more importantly for us, it tells us what we need in order to connect microbit to Scratch. Just going to scroll down. It should have already defaulted to the operating system that you're using. I'll be demonstrating this on the Mac operating system, but the steps are exactly the same for Windows. You're going to need to download Scratch Link, and Scratch Link allows you to connect and control devices in the real world. Once you've downloaded Scratch Link, just unzip it. Double click the installer package to install it and run through the sequence of steps. Find the Scratch Link application and then open it. An icon should appear in your top toolbar. If you're on a Windows device, then it will appear down the bottom toolbar. You're going to want to follow these next steps. First, connect your microbit to your computer. Then download this hex file. Once you've got the file, unzip it. And then step three, you need to drag and drop this hex file onto your microbit. So you see here that microbit is now at a location. We drag and drop that hex file onto it. It will tell us that the disk is not ejected properly. That's exactly what should happen. All right, we're just about ready to jump over into the Scratch Project Editor. Feel free to power your microbit through the computer or you can use the battery pack. Head on over to the Scratch Editor and over in the category section, jump all the way down to the bottom to you see this blue rectangle with the scratch blocks and an addition sign. Add extension is what we're looking for here. And then find the one that is the microbit extension and you will need to click that. It's going to look for your microbit. Make sure that you've got Scratch Link open and your microbit is connected to a power source. Once you see your microbit in the list, press connect. Cool, our microbit is now connected. Let's go to the editor. You'll see that we've got a new category here for microbit and this green check mark here signals that our microbit is currently connected to Scratch. I'm now going to unplug the microbit from its power source. Watch what happens. Okay, so we've lost our connection to our microbit. We can press reconnect and it's looking for devices. You'll see here in the Scratch microbit blocks, we've got this orange circle with an exclamation mark, which signifies to us that our microbit is not connected. To reconnect, we can press this orange circle. If we reattach our microbit to a power source, it should come back up in the list, and it does. Hit the connect, and we're good to go again. I'm just back over here at the Scratch microbit page. We've got some troubleshooting here that you can go through if you're still encountering some issues. The most important piece of information here is that only one computer can be connected to a microbit at a time. Shortly I'm going to talk about the microbit features for Scratch, but if you want to get your hands busy coding, I've got a card in the top hand corner now that will get you into these blocks. I'm over here on the features page of the microbit website. The microbit has a whole heap of features, but we can only use some of these in Scratch. Which ones are they? I'll talk you through them now. The first is the 25 LEDs on the front of the microbit. You can see here this flashing heart animation. We've got the ability to individually manipulate each of those LEDs. We've also got access to two programmable buttons that users can interact with. With, you can press them down at the same time. In Scratch we can detect when these three pins have been connected to. We also have access to this accelerometer and this essentially detects motion with the microbit. We've got the ability to measure some shake, some tilt and some motion. At the time of the recording of this video we can't access the light sensor, the temperature sensor, the compass, radio or Bluetooth via Scratch at this stage. If that could well change just stay in the loop on the Scratch website. If you want to explore these other features of the microbit, head on over to the MakeCode website and I've also got a card in the top corner that will put you onto some MakeCode tutorials. Alright, it's time for a scratchy question and I want to know how did you find out about the microbit? Drop your answer in the comment section below. Thanks for checking out this microbit tutorial. Like, subscribe, ring the bell if you're new around here and have a scout of some of my other content on your screen right now. Show your support for this channel by checking out exclusive content on my Patreon page, my funky red bubble tees, or by joining the mailing list. All links below in the description. But until then, I'm off to go find a wave. I'll catch you in the next one.